So Charlotte every now and again chooses to go back in her carry case for safety. She's got a nice hot water bottle in there so we just offered her some food while she's now a bit nervous of us. So Charlotte's ready to go to the vets this afternoon. We're going to see if we can get the pellet removed from her head. So huge day for her. She's done so well this morning. She's much more aware of everything. So we're going to see if the vets are able to remove that and just get her left arm checked out as well. Charlotte's been asleep on her teddy the whole way. We've now just arrived at the vets. Charlotte's back from the vets with Laura. So Charlotte finally had the pellet removed from her head. Um, she woke up such so good this morning. She had such a great day. She was running around, she was climbing and everything. Um, because she's much more aware as well. Uh, and uh, this afternoon she went to the vet so she doesn't look quite so good anymore but at least the pellet is out um, and they also put some stitches in her right arm where she had a wound as well and took an x-ray of her left arm just to be sure. How are you doing Charlotte? Hey little miss. And she had some gas and then some local anaesthetic to remove the pellet so you can see it's uh, see the swelling it was already swollen before she went in as well um, but that should go down in time and we also kept the pellet as well so we can show everybody the size of it. So Laura's looking after Charlotte now after she's back from the vets. As you can see, here's the pellet. So that was inside her head, just under the skin there. She's using it about. <laughs> Charlotte's decided to go for a climb. She says, I'm getting out of here. Hey, who's a good girl? Oh, sh hey, what are you doing? Hey, miss. Oh, careful. Does she have stuff in her pouches? No, I think she's just going oh, to okay. Eddie's giving one of the wild troop an ice cream today. Here's Almond Eyes. Very sweet girl, part of the wild troop.
Alma Dyers has been around for a very long time. She's quite an old girl now. Here's our buddy Jinx down at Holton Barrington Troop. Still doing really well. Still likes to hang out in this bottom corner of the enclosure. Here's Mika. Pet who was integrated last year. And there's Goon. Goon, one of the stars of the Velvet Forest movie that you can now actually rent online or buy it and keep it for yourself just for a few dollars. Or D and D. This is Isa Maria. On the left here, just facing the other way, we have Halea. On to the right, we've also got Turk, who went in last year. Oh, on here, he's just popped up. Is Barney? So he's the same age as Turk. They both went in last year. Uh, all doing really well. I actually got all the babies because I've just noticed Akoya is also here. Well, here we have little Barney playing with uh, Kobe and. Uh, He's having a little bit of fun, so little Koya spots him and uh, she's starting to come over, you can't see her in the background there and uh, she's going to actually join in the little fight um, but you can see how well they've been integrated and what a good time they're having there she comes, both of them picking on poor, poor Kobe um, but of course look how gently he's playing with them um, so really nice to see how these guys have managed to get in the truth and things going so well Foster Mom Appy and Tony here. Happy, we want to see Tony. We got Foster on Appy, and we're in a cuddle session with this Mr. Tony. You might remember Miko, he had part of his intestines removed, he had a very serious wound and he's been in sick bay for a few weeks and then he came back to his introduction cage just to check he was alright with the exercise um, and certain foods and now he's ready to be returned to his troop at Scro. And there's Ellie, bottom section primate carer, about to let him out. That was him. So Miko's chasing Bertrand. There's been um, 
The males have been chasing each other quite a bit since Miko went back. Miko's here in the tree. He's, he's also been doing a lot of the chasing though. Found himself a corn cob. So I think he kind of went in and set the pace and just made sure that nobody's going to attack him. So he's been kind of chasing some of the males around as well. Remind them that he's a confident male and can stand up for himself. There's Jake down below. So I think Miko was trying to re-establish himself in the group and not taking any nonsense from the boys. And now he's found himself a food pile nearby and eating. Seems to be getting around just fine, running, jumping, climbing. Now we're going to make sure we see him eating every day for at least the next week. Keep an eye on him because it was a serious op that he had. Here's Piggy and uh oh. And today we're going to be letting in some other females and juveniles as part of their integration. So there comes Dustin, top section primate carer, and Jamie integration staff will be joining us shortly to be letting some more monkeys in for Pokey to meet. You may remember Uh oh she was born in 2008 and she's the daughter of Brownie. She's been quite a good foster mum and looked after a few monkeys. She does get nervous but likes climbing into intro cages. This morning we've got Ricky in with Pokey and Eva. So Ricky arrived in 2012 with Chumba, uh, integrated in September 2012 and was kept as a pet for over a year. Very humanized, more so with women, very good nature, but likes to grab and steal things from people. That's ex-pet Ricky there on the right. Eva, on the other hand, was born in 2007. Uh, she's been the foster mom to Louis, Chloe and Mitch. So she is quite an experienced mom. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to look after this little one with no problem. Typical little kid over stepping the line. Mom has to put it in place. And then of course you get a little bit of an argument. This is Eva grooming Uh oh. We've now got Uh oh, Eva and Ricky in the cage with Pokey. Well, if you're going to get groomed, you may as well go uh, all out and uh, get the full body version from tip to toe. Um, there's actually no holding back. So, uh, this is like going for one of these all over massages and uh, just having that nice time to relax after a hard day at work looking at after the kids. There's always time for getting a little bit of a snack before things carry on. You can see she's posturing for more grooming as well with the way the tail's standing up and how she's standing so uh, I don't think it's over yet. Uh, there she's got a little pokey in helping as well. So uh, really a big family day and taking advantage of the of the total situation.
Charlotte has a special thank you for Anthony who um, donated money for us to get her some yummy yummy strawberries which is one of her favorites this is helping keep Charlotte's stomach full and keep her happy and help her as she continues to recover so thank you very much She's a very happy girl. It's very cold this morning, so she doesn't want to eat herself. <laughs> Charlotte is getting more adventurous. Today she's uh, all the way up there. And she got up there herself and she seems to be enjoying a nice little snack. Wow, look at you. Make yourself comfy. Oh, and you're peeing, of course. Charlotte is constantly urinating. So Charlotte has decided she wants to climb and she's not doing too bad. Uh, sometimes she's using, losing her balance, but she's able to support herself pretty well. She was enjoying sitting here and looking out the window, but I think it got a little too warm. As you can see, her head is looking so good, and her stitches in her arm as well. She's doing everything she can to get away from me, her um, wild inner monkey has come out and she absolutely hates her curves now. <laughs> So this is Tumbles, first in. Tumbles arrived in 2013 as an orphan. Uh, she was found alone and injured in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, family did care for her for about two and a half months uh, before finally bringing her through to the, the foundation. I think Tumbles has just realized uh, what she's eaten for and said, oh my god, no thank you, not for me, uh, 
too late in the season let me out I'm not taking this how did I come in here this is not for me please let me out you can see it trying to tuck on the door I don't want to look after this little one <laughs> Poor little Elia is probably thinking, come here, don't you want to be my mom? I love you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's trying his best. It's kind of surprising. He's uh, very, very interested in, in finding a mother, I suppose, because he's been missing uh, a mom for a while from so young. But uh, she's definitely <laughs> not keen on having him. Yes, you can put inside. <laughs> well, finally everyone decides uh, that that wasn't the right uh, foster mom for little Elio. So uh, Maggie Mae has come in, things seem to be a lot better. Uh, Elio seems to be uh, a lot happier as well. They seem to have bonded very, very quickly. She seems happy, he seems happy, uh, and that's the important uh, thing in the end of the day. Just look how relaxed little Elio is in um, Maggie May's uh, arms there. She's basically grooming him and everything. He hasn't got a care in the world. I think he's very grateful now. Uh, he's got a mom that's uh, caring for him and uh, wanting to look after him. Little Elio not letting go of this mom. Uh, he's just got to learn. <laughs> how to hold on. She says, hey, boy, it's not my leg. Just hang on a minute. Give us a second. He says, I'm not going anywhere. There's no way he's going to lose another mother. So it looks like these two is a, a match made in heaven. He's found his mom, whether she likes it or not. Like freedom. As little Elia has lost his mom so early, he's not used to the clinging procedure. So he's still got to work out how to cling to her. And Maggie Mae seems a little bit confused about this.
Well, that's a little bit better. It looks like uh, they're sort of settling in now. Uh, Elia's getting uh, the idea what to do. Maggie May has been very, very patient in this whole aspect. But as I say, she has brought up uh, orphans before and she's had a good foster mom uh, in Mrs. Gold. So it shouldn't really be a problem. It's just uh, giving time for this little one to get used to her and uh, know how to cling on and things and not be so afraid of, of losing her. So I suppose you can realize the trauma. This little one's lost its mom at an early age. It's just become attached to a new mom and uh, certainly doesn't want to lose her. Um, so we'll just see how things progress from here. But so far it's looking very, very good. Shame, you can see in the little face that he's uh, fairly frightened and scared and insecure. He's not too sure of what's going on. Um, but uh, at least he's got comfort there. Maggie may be very patient, but it is tough on her, um, him not knowing how to hold properly. As you can imagine, trying to get around with a baby monkey hanging on your legs, not the easiest thing under the, under the sun. Well, a little bit easier, um, not quite the right position. Mom trying to rectify the situation. The little Elio is sort of not having any of this. He doesn't want to let this mom go for any, any reason at all. So let's hope it doesn't take him too long to learn how to climb underneath and hold on. It's Elio with foster mom Maggie May. They bonded quite well already. You can see he's sleeping and very clingy on her back. Eva on the left grooming uh oh, he's grooming Katie and then Pokey eating on the right. Katie's an older, low-ranking female and when the Alpha Plotty came in then Katie redirected a little bit onto Pokey but as you can see now Pokey's trying to play with her now that she's got her mum at home with her she's become a lot more confident around Katie Patchwork. Patchwork arrived in 2005 as an orphan. Um, she's kind of high ranking, she's not as dominant as she used to be, but she does uh, hang around with the high ranking uh, females. Easily distinguishable by that kink in her tail that you can see there. I think little Pokey is feeling a little bit left out of all this grooming and uh, try to get a little bit of attention for himself saying hey I'm also yeah I'm the new kid in the block uh, what about grooming me um, mom just doesn't seem interested trying to push him to a side uh, so she can uh, carry on grooming uh, without interruption typical naughty little kid look how he's, he's not giving up it's like uh, you're doing your shopping and the kid just wants to do what it wants to do it doesn't matter how you try and stop him he just wants the attention There's patchwork on the left and the O on the right. Pokey trying to get in between. Pokey's honestly trying his best. Really he's craving a little bit of attention from these two. 
but they're doing an extremely good job ignoring him, even though he's pushing in and jumping on them as much as he can. But it just shows you the, the tolerance. So this is a little adopted kid, and uh, they're not to be too concerned about him. Uh-oh, he's being a very good mum to Pokey. So every day we let her out into the enclosure and she goes for a walk around and just to say if the troop, hi, I'm still here. Um, and then she always comes back for Pokey. Um, Pokey paces a little bit inside sometimes when she's not there, but as soon as Uh-oh comes back in, she gives Pokey a great big hug, carries her around for a bit, and then they continue as normal with each other. And Pokey is more comfortable with her mum inside when we let in females as well. They're just having their AM plates before we start the integration this morning. Make sure that they've both had enough food before the others come in and steal it. And it's just wonderful how these mums, a lot of them, you'll let them outside and then they'll still come back in to the introduction cage for their new adopted baby. This potty tries to keep giving Pokey a hug, but Pokey wants to play. Dottie's alpha female and the two of them are getting on really well. This is Chloe who's just entered. Chloe hasn't been in before. Chloe arrived in 2013. She was born in 2012 and she was fostered by Eva. Patchwork finally calmed Pokey down and she wanted to play and managed to give her a good groom. It makes such a difference when the monkeys come straight from the wild. You'll see that they are much more confident around other monkeys. They'll approach them. They will know who's who, which individuals to be wary of, um, just from observing them. And Pokey's very confident. And also the monkeys are good with her too. Because she's not been kept in human hands. She's not been a pet. Um, her mum was killed by a car, which means she's still got all her wild natures, so you can see the difference it makes when they're actually wild and how quickly the integration goes in comparison to if they've been kept as a pet and they've got a lot more social skills to learn. Oh, 
that this little girl is just doing absolutely wonderful. She's making lots of friends. She's actually the little instigator. She initiates the contact quite often. Follows the females. And there you can see Atto in the troop grooming previous year's orphans. So she tends to look after a lot of babies. So Pokey's in good hands. There's Penny just there on the right, Penelope. Here on the right we've got Daisy just come in, the very chatty one with pink silhouettes around her eyes and Patchwork's just giving her a nice groom. So we'll see if she has any interactions with Pokey. It's her first time in as well today. Daisy's mother was shot, she arrived in 2012 and her foster mum was Uh-oh. Daisy was quite a difficult feeder with the milk when she was small. She was very difficult to feed. Didn't want to take her milk bottle. But she turned out just fine in the end. Daisy managed to get hold of Pokey, giving her a hug. Pokey, of course, wants to play. <laughs> She's been trying to play with every female that comes in. Pokey just had a nice play with Daisy and now it's kind of on her back. Kind of tilda. It's Daisy. Pokey's basically been playing with everybody. Mums are very tolerant. Oh, Harpy. You ready, guys? You want to you wanna help? <laughs> Carry it. <laughs> so, Harpy's just back from the fence. So his arm is nicely bandaged. He refuses to stay still, but we're getting him some food, Nara. You can just put it through on the other side. Put the yeah. <laughs> yeah, happy boy. Hoppy's still in sick bay recovering from his arm wound. It was quite a nasty wound that he had on the left arm. Um, we did all the bandage changes and now it's healed quite well, but he's still not using his fingers or his hand. So we're just concerned about that and keeping him him in for longer. Because of course he's already only got one foot. We don't want him to not be able to have the use of his hand as well. There it is, the left hand. So Hoppy got himself into quite a bit of a fight and almost degloved the whole of the bottom section of his arm which was very very worrying for us. Uh, fortunately we managed to get him in time into the vets and everything sorted out and it's healing beautifully. Fortunately with a lot of bandages and uh, changes and care uh, he's looking pretty good at the moment. Here's Hoppy. I'm just seeing if he can use his left hand which he does seem to put down now and again and grip the fence a little which is good because we are we were very concerned about his arm and the use of his hand so that's good progress because we want to be able to return him back to Dino and Daniel troop as soon as we can video of Hoppy using his hand much better. He's been using it to eat today. He doesn't like us getting too near. 
So hopefully he'll be able to be returned to the Dino and Daniel tube soon. He's been recovering in sick bay uh, from an arm injury and he's well enough now to go back to an intra cage and that's what we're taking. Poppy was one of these sad cases. He came in uh, in around about 2007. He was handed in by the SPCA. Uh, he was found in a coal bunk on the back of a train. It looked like he, uh, his foot was actually mutilated and somebody operated on his back causing his tail to stand up permanently. So uh, he's also had a lot of trauma and a hard time in his life. Doesn't trust people that much. And that's why he's scared of everybody. So we just want to get him back where he should be. Uh, he gave us a little bit of a fright because he had quite a bit of a fight. Um, I don't know whether it was the other males, uh, but he had his arm bitten so badly uh, we thought there was even a chance of him going to lose it, but fortunately he didn't. The vets did a great job. Uh, everybody else did uh, a lot of work making sure the bandages were changed properly and in time. And of course it's healed remarkably well. And uh, of course now he's getting ready to go back uh, to the troop and uh, take his place back in the D&D enclosure. So Hoppy is now back with D&D. He can see the troop is all excited to see him and is saying hi. Um, wanting to know how he's doing and what he has done in the time he hasn't been with them. He's a little bit cautious and tries to find out where he is and um, wants to explore his surroundings first. Well, we're going to end off with some uh, bush babies having a little bit of fun. And then I'd just like to thank everybody for your support, for watching, for your donations, for sharing, for liking. It all really makes a difference and uh, keeps us going. It gives us motivation. It's really helping the monkeys a lot. So thank you, everyone. Till next week, we'll see you all then.